Hello, my soccer universe. Let's do this. The girls are playing in the room next door. They promise to be quiet or not <laughs> uh, fight with each other, which we're gonna see how this is gonna happen. But yeah, I wanna run through uh, most of the bigger leagues, uh, make a big roundup. I there are still Monday night games to be played that I won't feature. I do this before these games, but I also wanna look at 5:38 predictions for the season. I usually use uh, odds, but 5:38 has a little bit of a bigger um, range uh, in odds that uh, the bookmaker, you know, the combined bookmaker pages uh, often don't feature. It's not that easy to find. So I thought uh, this might be uh, the best way. I generally like the 538 model, but it switches up uh, quickly, as we will see already in our first example, which is, of course, the Premier League. How are things in the Premier League at the moment? Let's just look um, in general, before I go into predictions, at the, we have, thanks to the draw between Liverpool and Everton, we have Manchester City in first place with 71 points out of 29 games. That's pretty amazing. Liverpool is 70 points. Now, um, just judging from it, Liverpool, yeah, uh, lacked precision. From what I could see, Manchester City was actually dominant in the, in the final minutes of the game against Bournemouth. But uh, from everything I hear, they were actually terrible before that, but they got the win. Uh, the other thing that uh, is in favor of Manchester City, that uh, the direct comparison between Liverpool and Manchester City, they have a win and a draw. So uh, that might be a slight favor. On the other side, Liverpool is an easier running. I personally would like Liverpool uh, to make it, but you know. Uh, you never know how it goes. Then we have Tottenham in third with 61. Uh, Manchester and I are breathing down their neck, uh, 58 points. Also Arsenal 57, Chelsea 56, and that's basically a top six. I don't think that anyone out of those six will crack into the European spaces. Wolverhampton 43, Watford 43, West Ham 39. That's uh, the top nine. Then Everton 37. West Ham got ahead of Everton. Leicester 35. Bournemouth 34. Crystal Palace 33. Newcastle 31. Brighton 30. Burnley 30. Um, Southampton 27. And then the three teams that are threatening to be relegated is Cardiff 25. Fulham 17 and Huddersfield 14. Uh, looks that those three are the ones that will get into there. Uh, let's just see the odds for winning the Premier League. The only two teams that really have a chance is Man City and Liverpool. Everything else is less than 1%. Um, around Christmas, it was almost 70% Liverpool. Now we have 65% chance for Man City winning it, according to th uh, 538, 35% for Liverpool. Both of those are more or less certainly in the Champions League. Tottenham has a 79% chance to make a Champions League spot. Uh, they have actually Chelsea projected to be in fourth, finishing in fourth at 51% and Arsenal Man United only 38% and 32% uh, chance respectively to make it uh, into uh, the Champions League. As for relegation, Huddersfield more or less certain, Fulham more or less certain. Huddersfield more than 99%, Fulham 98%, and Cardiff also doesn't look well, 77%. Uh, the teams that are threatened, um, Southampton 10%, Burnley 8%, Brighton 5%, Newcastle 2%, everything else is not realistic. So uh, the picture is pretty much set in stone for relegation. Uh, also, Champions League is a little bit open because there are four teams. We know the top two and they are fighting for uh, the top spot. Okay, let's look at the next league, which is La Liga. Uh, that is pretty straightforward for most of the time at the moment. Who is, Who do you think is the leader? Barcelona, of course, with 60 points. Uh, Atletico Madrid 53, Real Madrid 48, and then two surprises. Getafe with 42 points, Alaves now um, swapped with Sevilla in 40, and Sevilla only 37 points. And just Barcelona has 60, Sevilla has 37. It was not too long ago that they were almost uh, neck at neck. A uh, huge turnaround. S uh, Valencia is also moving up with 36, uh, Betis is dropping th uh, also with 36, Real Sociedad also losing spots 35, Eibar 34. Uh, Bilbao 33, Espanyol 33, Girona 31, Leganes 30, Levante 30, Real Valladolid 26, Celta 25, Villarreal 23, Rayo 23 and 22, Huesca. The last three, Villarreal, Rayo and Huesca are the ones to be threatened for relegation. 
Let's look at chances. I mean, uh, La Liga, 95% chance of Barcelona winning. It's a foregone conclusion that Barcelona will win that one. Atletico Madrid, the only one with having a somewhat of a chance, 4%. But, you know, with seven points and a game at the camp now, doesn't look realistic. Uh, for the Champions League, bar both Barcelona and Atletico Madrid are more or less certainties. Real Madrid, 98% is close to. And then it's actually... A uh, whitish field, and it makes it quite of interesting. It almost intersects with the relegation zone. Getafe, 40%, Sevilla, 29%, uh, Valencia, 14%, Alaves, 8%. I think those are the realistic ones. Real Sociedad, 4%, Eibar, 3%, Bilbao, 2%, Real Betis, 2%. And now we start with the relegation zone. Leganes has a 3% chance of being relegated, but also a 1% chance of making the Champions League. Just have that in mind. But for relegation, Espanyol 2%, not really, uh, Girona 5%, and Levante 11%. The ones where it's really uh, dangerous is Celta de Vigo 46%, Valladolid 48%, Villarreal 48%, Huesca 64%, and Rayo Vallecano 71%. Note there's no certainty yet in there. There are at least five teams for three relegation spots. So uh, Celta de Vigo, Valladolid, Villarreal, Huesca, uh, Rayo Vallecano, that's... It's there's still a lot uh, move, moving around. Rayo Vallecano gets the bad value because they have a really bad rating by 538, uh, which I'm not sure if is that uh, justified, but you know, it is what it is. Next league, let's go to Germany, the Bundesliga. Uh, yesterday, actually, a big result that I forgot this morning is uh, Stuttgart winning against um, Hannover 5 1, which may ease their troubles a little bit. We of course know now that uh, Germany, Dortmund and Bayern are level on points with 54 and Dortmund has just by two goals the better uh, goal different, two, uh, differential. Leipzig is in third spot and then it's Gladbach and Eintracht Frankfurt. Uh, so Leipzig 45, Gladbach 43 and Gladbach has had a really bad run of results. Uh, Frankfurt with 40, Leverkusen in the 39, Wolfsburg 39, and I think that's where it stops for me. Uh, Hertha 35, Hoffenheim 34, Werder 33, uh, Düsseldorf 31, Mainz 30. I think that's kind of the midfield that should be safe. I would probably even put Freiburg in there with 27. Relegation zone, Schalke, big surprise, 23 points, Augsburg 21, and then the three... Stuttgart 19, Hannover 14, Nuremberg 13. I think Hannover and Nuremberg have no, not much chance. Stuttgart might have a one. Let's see what uh, the chances are according to 538. Um, Bayern wins the Bundesliga 84% chance. Dortmund only 16% chance. And I think this is the same feeling that I have at the moment. Um, there is, Dortmund has the chance of having a direct... Um, duel with, the two, uh, with Bayern, but it's in Munich. You gotta get a win there. I think otherwise, uh, this is not, not gonna go. 530 even proje projects a six point difference between the two teams. Both are more or less certain to qualify for a Champions League. Then we have Leipzig at 74%, uh, also qualifying for the Champions League. And then, um, you know, three teams that have a ser uh, considerable chance Gladbach at 43%, Leverkusen 35%, uh, Frankfurt at 32%. But Leipzig seems to be uh, the. Uh, most reasonable candidate. Wolfsburg, Hoffenheim, Wolfsburg 6, Hoffenheim 8, and Hertha with 1% outside chances. Then the big midfield, as I said, and really the relegation stone starts at Schalke, 4% chance of being relegated. Sh Augsburg, 10% chance of being relegated. Stuttgart, 28% chance of being relegated. Hannover, 90%, and Nuremberg, 95%. So Hannover and Nuremberg, I think, will go down. Stuttgart might stay up because they have to play the third place from the second league, and that might actually save them. Um, the um, Bundesliga has a very good track record if, in those cases. Serie A, also not that exciting, uh, at least when it comes to the championship, but you know, there is quite some excitement, I think, for the Champions League. Uh, how's, how's it standing? We have now Juve with 72 points. It's ridiculous. Juve has still not lost, although they never look like a great uh, team, especially in the last few few months. You, you see Juve very vulnerable, and basically the season hinges now on one game at Atletico, against Atletico Madrid. 
uh, Napoli 56, Milan 48, and here comes now that really, really tight zone. Milan 48 points, Inter 47 points, Roma 44, Lazio 41, Torino 41, Atalanta 41. Is Sampdoria in there? Maybe. Uh, with 39, Fiorentina I think is probably maneuvering out of position, but let's put them just in there with 36 points. Those are the ones that uh, battle for European spots um, or have at least a decent chance. The midfield, uh, if you look at it, it is Sassuolo 31, Genoa 30, Parma 30. Cagliari 27 looks good, Udine 25. And now we're getting into danger zone. Spal 23, Empoli 22. I mean, they still have a cushion because uh, Bologna has only 18, Frosinone 17, Kievo 10. Let's see the chances. Juve uh, more or less has wrapped up Serie A. Uh, qualifies also for Champions League. Napoli also more than 99% chance. Um, 5.38, thanks to higher rating, has Inter with 62% uh, chance qualifying for the Champions League. Milan at 56%. Roma only 31%, although being slightly higher than Milan. Lazio 24%, which is actually of the three that I just mentioned, the highest rated one. Atalanta is even higher rated than those two. I uh, have to question there. Rating a little bit, 18% of making it, and Torino 6%, Sampdoria 3%, Fiorentina 1%. That's pretty much how I said it. But now for relegation, and I'm not sure I agree with Parma, but it, again, it's down to a rating because they came just, just up and it takes a while until they just. They have Parma 2%, Calgary 5%, Udine 16%, Spal 25%. Empoli 35%. Those are the ones that are still above the line. And then we have the three. Bologna 51, Frozen only 68, and Kievo 97. I think we all can agree that Kievo will go down. I don't think it looks all that well for Frozen and Bologna, although I have to give it to Frozen They are well organized, and Bologna had a good run as of late. Empoli, Spal, maybe you have some trouble. And I'm not sure if Udine and Cagliari are sleeping all that pleasantly at the moment. So those were the four big ones. Let's go uh, to the next few. Um, we start with League uh, I think uh, League uh, is the one that I still put in there. Um, we know who's going to be champion already. I mean, PSG has uh, 71 points with still a game in hand. Lille 54 uh, and Olympique 49. Those are the Champions League spots. I don't think anyone else will really make it. Marseille 44 has the Europa League spot that is challenged by Saint Etienne uh, with 43. Reims uh, with 42. Maybe Nice with 40. Still have a chance. Montpellier at 38. Strasbourg 37, Rennes 37, and Nîmes 36. Those midfield, I would even say the midfield extends further down. Uh, Angers, uh, Bordeaux, probably not. Yeah, it's a very broad, broad midfield. I mean, now I would say here begins the teams that could be threatened. Toulouse, 28, Monaco, made a rise, 26, Amiens, 25, Caen, 20, Dijon, 20, and Gagan, 19. Those last three, Caen, Dijon, Gagan, are probably the ones that will go down. Let's check uh, the stats here. PSG, is more or less a certain to win the league and qualify for Champions League. Lille and Lyon, 84 and 81% respectively of winning uh, a qualifying spot for the Champions League. Marseille, 15%, 12%. 12%. Outside chance for Rennes, 3%, Reims, 2%, and Montpellier, 2%. Everyone else is not in the picture anymore as for a relegation. Monaco, 8%. Toulouse, 13%. Amiens, 16%. 53% for Dijon. Gagan, 65%. Caen, 67%. So you already can see. I think Caen is again a uh, lowly rate because they were promoted. I still would say uh, Gagan is the higher certainty there. And Caen, Dijon, yeah. Doesn't look all too well for them. Uh, Portugal had a really nice run in for the league, but there was of course the big game between Benfica and uh, Porto that Benfica won. Before that, Porto was actually in a better position, but at the moment, and now uh, starting at this, I'm only going to look at the top group. Benfica 59, Porto 57, Braga 52, Sporting 49, uh, Morenza 42. I think this is the, the top five, and let's see. Um, how things said, I mean, 538 says Benfica wins the league, 77% of uh, chance, Porto 23%, everyone else is out of it. Champions League, Benfica certainty, Porto near certainty with 95%, Braga 4%, Sporting 2%. Um, so that's 
that then let's go uh, to the Netherlands. That's always an interesting league because there are usually three teams that are fighting, that have a chance of, at least for fighting for the top spots. Uh, the big three, PSV, Ajax and Eindhoven. And that's exactly how it stands at the moment. PSV 61 points, Ajax 50, uh, 61 points, Ajax 56 points, Feyenoord 46. To me, it seems this is PSV's to lose. Um, Alkma is 43%, Vitesse 39%, uh, 43 points, 39 points. I'm getting confused with points and uh, all that. However, when I look at 538, um, the uh, Dutch have two Champions League spots. Uh, Ajax, thanks to enormous rating, which is probably due to their good Champions League performance this year and nothing else, has a 53% win of winning uh, the winning league PSV 47. I would, I personally would give the edge to PSV. Feyenoord is out of the picture there. Uh, Russia, also interesting. Um, we will, we will really go around Europe. <laughs> this time around. At the moment, it's um, more or less halfway down the league. Zenit leads with 37 points out of Krasnodar with 34 and uh, ZSK Moscow with 30. Spartak 29, Lokomotiv 29. Uh, Rubin Kazan rounds out the top 6 with 28. 538 has Krasnodar winning uh, 43%, Zenit 39%. Again, rating is the huge difference. Uh, ZSK has only a 13% chance of winning. Champions League, Krasnodar 88%, Zenit 86%, ZSK 62%. I would be surprised if uh, Zenit gives up that. I mean, they have a three point lead, but you know, Krasnodar really convinced me. Um, CSK 13% of winning it, 62% of making the Champions League. The two top teams have about 80, uh, almost 90%, 86 and 88 respectively. Spartak 25% of making the Champions League, Lokomotiv 23 and Kazan 9%. So yeah, that's how it stands in Russia. Don't, you cannot tell me this time that I'm not gonna go uh, and miss someone. Uh, let's look at Belgium. That was, that's always an interesting league. Of course, let me see. Uh, Henk has a huge lead, uh, 59 points over Brugge, 53 uh, points. Um, Antwerp is 49 and Standard Liege is 47. And then, um, yeah, I think this is the top four. We have 46, uh, let me see. <laughs> I, I, I should know, saint Trudense. I honestly, that's a team that uh, I haven't heard. Anderlecht is 45 and Hent 44. Those are the top seven. Now, again, there's a huge rating difference between Henk and Brügge because the Henk, uh, Brügge played in the um, uh, Champions League. But they have Henk 46%, Brügge 39%. 75% for Henk to qualify for Champions League, 71% for Brügge. Uh, Liege 21% for Champions League, 6% for, uh, uh, for the Championship. And yeah, the rest is all 10% uh, or below for either one of those categories. Uh, okay, so this was uh, Belgium. Now let's go to Turkey. Uh, where actually, we have a big surprise. Uh, I mean, I have not checked the Turkish standings in a long time. So to me, this uh, came a little bit as a surprise, but Bazaar. Bajak Shehir is first. And I know this is a tiny team, but I think they have some support from Erdogan. Uh, for that. Galatasaray with their 54 points, Galatasaray 46, Bejiktas 41, Trabzonspor 36, so they are already uh, they're going down, so it's between those three, and we have Bajak Shehir, uh, 92% winning the league, 99% uh, almost certainly make Champions League, Galatasaray 7% to win the league, 80% to um, make it to Champions League, and Bejiktas it's more or less out of the race and only 16% making the Champions League. Switzerland has a very similar, uh, almost decided feel to it, where uh, we have young boys with 62 points far ahead of everyone. And I'm very happy about that. Basel 4 43, Thun 36. Um, <laughs> is St. Gallen in there with 39? Probably not. I think the top three are pretty much set in stone. Young boys wins the league, makes the Champions League. Basel, 86% chance of making the Champions League spots, uh, but out of the uh, race, Toon, 13% of doing so. 
Then we come to Austria. This is a big surprise uh, to me because of these guys, Lusk. Uh, at the moment, and you know, the Austrian league has a very weird system that it's not even worth uh, mentioning the points totals because they all get halved. But we have Salzburg at 51 points, Lusk 40 points, and Austria 30 points. Those are the top three. And then the points will be halved, so it will get much, much tighter. Salzburg is more or less a certain of making a Champions League. We have two spots and a 94% chance of winning the league, but Lusk still has a 6% chance. And I'm going to take the 6% any time of the day. Austria, 5% chance of making it in the Champions League. And if you look uh, overall, I mean, there is Rapid Vienna in is in the mix, but they need to make the championship round, which is not that certain. The same is true for Sturm Graz. Uh, if they make it, they have a good chance. So, yeah, um, Austria, I think Salzburg will win it. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say it. We have uh, two more leagues that I want to uh, look at. Three more. Uh, the next one is Greek. Pauk is leading the Greek league. Uh, speaking of uh, European, of black and white teams in Europe. Doing very well. Pauk, with a big win yesterday, has now 61 points ahead of Olympiakos. Olympiakos has a game in hand at 51 points. Atromedos 43, Aik 43. I think that pretty much rounds out the league. Pauk, 97% chance of winning. Certainty to make it to the Champions League. Same for Olympiakos, 99%, but only 3% chance for the championship. Aik, only 1% chance. So you see the top three are pretty much set in stone in Greece at the moment. Then uh, Denmark um, is, looks also interesting. We have in first place Kopenhagen 57, Midtjylland 53, and that's more or less it. Because Obe 36 and Esbjerg 35, Brøndby 34 and Aalborg 32, yeah, and then Norgel and blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is very dense, but the top two are clearly ahead of everyone. With Kopenhagen hold, holding the advantage, 63% of winning the league and the Champions League, and the same thing goes for Midtjylland, 37 37. The rest is pretty much out of it. Lastly, Scotland. Um, I'm always sad how deep the Scottish league has actually fallen. Celtic has 66 points, Rangers Faye 58 points, Aberdeen 50 points. So, Champions League and League 96% for Celtic, Rangers only 4% chance, and Aberdeen is more or less out of it. So, yeah, uh, we, uh, they have on 538 a lot more leagues, even um, for the second ones. Maybe that's in interesting to see um, who will come up. Uh, who will come up from uh, into the top leagues? I want to see, do we find um, the English, yeah, Premiership Scotland, they have J-League, Premier Division South Africa, Championship here, Norwich um, promoted 81%, Leeds 67, Sheffield 67, that, that will be interesting. Uh, in Spain, Osasuna 68, Deportivo 60, Granada 54. In Germany, Köln 91% of getting promoted, Hamburg 57, and Union Berlin 48%. That's interesting. In Serie B, Brescia 72%, Palermo 61%, Benevento 51%. And in Ligue 2, Metz 98%, Brest 83%, Lorient 11%. But there is also, I saw that... Um, uh, Paris uh, FC at the moment has 46 points. They might actually make their rounds in there. I, I actually would... Uh, they have about the same chance as Lorient. So that would be, would be really interesting if we have two Parisian teams in the top league. So that was a hell of a roundup. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, anyway, let me know how you thought about those percentages, where you find them in interesting. In some cases, I didn't find them very credible. In uh, some, I did. Um, again, I usually rely on bookmakers, but I, they, they don't have a market usually for who makes the Champions League. So um, therefore, I want to get in uh, that as well. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.